This video is sponsored by Made the Best. More about them later. Man, that went together so easy, it was stupid. All right, so up first we have quarter inch thick walnut. It's a solid hardwood. And uh, I'm just curious if this 10 watt laser will be able to cut it. We're just gonna see how many passes it will take. I've got my power set to 100 and my speed set to 80. Let's just see what happens. Holy cow, one pass, that is a clean, clean cut. I mean, look at this, there's like not even any burn marks on it. Okay, this is gonna be fun. What should we cut next? Now we've got some red oak and some poplar. Again, these are solid hardwoods. They are not craft plywood. This is the real deal, quarter inch. Let's see if it can cut through in a single pass, just like it did with the black walnut. Again, I have my power at 100, speed at 80, just a single pass, Let's see what happens. I should mention too, we are cutting across the grain. We are not cutting with the grain. So this is not an easy cut to do. All right, so that cut took about two minutes. Holy smokes. Oh my goodness. Look at how clean that is. Obviously burn marks where it was cut, but no burn marks up on the actual edge of the wood. Now that answered a burning question that I've had in my head, and that's, can I use the OLM3 to make custom fret boards? And the answer to that is a resounding heck yes. We're gonna use it to cut out the fingerboard shape, we're gonna cut the fret slots, and we're gonna do custom inlays later on in this video. But before we do that, I really wanna test the limitations of this laser, because so far, I am extremely impressed. So let's see what else it can cut. All right, so we're stepping it up quite a bit here. We are not only doing a harder wood, this is solid maple, but it's thicker. It's now 3 eighths of an inch. And so I, I highly doubt this is gonna go through on one pass, but maybe we can see how many passes it will take. All right. Holy cow. Look at that. And again, super clean. One pass. All right. This has far exceeded my expectations. Let's do some thicker wood. All right, stepping it up again. This is three quarter inch pine. So a little bit softer wood, but double the thickness. Let's see how many passes this takes. We'll start with just one pass and see what happens. So unfortunately we didn't make it quite all the way through that time really, really close. So we can definitely do this in two passes, I think. All right, two passes, here we go. Oh, I can see the reflection of the laser underneath it now. We are all the way through for sure. Oh, not, well, look at this. Does that count? I think that counts. It was through in most spots, only a couple spots it didn't punch through. If I slowed down the laser a little bit, it'd have been through. So now the question is, can we cut through three quarter inch maple? All right guys, ultimate test right here. This is three quarter inch solid hardwood maple, three quarter inch. I moved the laser a little bit closer just to make sure that that focus beam uh, is at its optimal strength all the way through the piece of wood. I slowed the speed down a little bit. We're doing 60 millimeters a minute, power at 100 and I have 10 passes. I'll stop it sooner if I feel like it's cut all the way through, but we're gonna give it 10 tries to get all the way through this. All right, we're on pass number seven and I am consistently seeing that laser glow in the honeycomb underneath it. So I think we're through. I'm gonna go ahead and give it eight passes just to make sure. All right, let's see what happened. Oh man, look at that. Just barely not. Let's crack it open and see how close we got. Well guys, I think three quarter inch maple is just barely outside of its reach. I mean, barely. It made it through in some spots, but overall, 
not enough to be a clean break. And so to be fair, Orchard never said that it could cut three quarter inch maple. I just thought maybe if I pushed it really hard, we could get that to happen. I'm super impressed that in two passes, it can do three quarter inch pine. And we could definitely do five eighths maple, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt. And so three quarter, just barely out of reach, I think. of these inlays are coming out so clean. I was just planning on cutting out some inlays from different wood to stick in there, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just cut out a whole other fretboard out of some different wood, and then I'll get two fretboards out of it with opposite matching inlays. That looks pretty darn good. Easy peasy. Could also be that it's poplar as opposed to walnut. Yeah, that those just chop right out. Perfect. Oh man, I can already tell this is gonna be so darn cool. Now this was about $20 worth of lumber and about two hours total worth of work. And an hour and a half of that was just the laser running that I could, you know, work on other stuff. And then a half hour to glue in all the inlays. And gosh, these turned out good. <laughs> way better than I expected, honestly. And so here's my question to you. How much do you think these could sell for? I mean, how much does a pre-slotted custom inlay fingerboard usually run? Um, it's gotta be at least 50 bucks, I would imagine. So if you were able to sell these for a hundred bucks, that's $80 profit, $40 an hour. Not too bad, especially considering how darn easy that was. Well, now I'm trying out something new and fun. I'm gonna see if I can make a pedal enclosure. I just used a box generator in Inkscape and then exported it as a DFX file, imported it into Lightburn, and then added my engraving as well as overlaid a picture of the stomp box and lined up the cuts for the controls. We're cutting this out of five mil Luan. I found a really nice sheet in my local hardware store. And so I'm excited. Let's see how this turns out. Obviously this laser has a number of other upgrades as well, like the built-in Wi-Fi unit, which I'll be honest, I haven't used and probably won't ever use for the type of design work that I do. I like having full access to Lightburn control software, but hands down the coolest and most genius feature of the Orchard Laser Master 3 is the integrated air assist. If you recall from my previous videos, once I installed the air assist pump, my lasers cut so much better and so much cleaner. And this one, you don't have to make that upgrade. Essentially, they designed it so that the cooling fan for the laser redirects the air down past the laser beam and onto your cutting board and acts as an air assist pump built in no modifications needed. And with just that little bit of air from the cooling fan, this thing makes super clean cuts without having to add an additional air assist pump. Now, if you decide that you do need additional airflow that this little cooling fan can't offer, which uh, honestly, I don't think that I ever will. I think that this little onboard fan does just a fine job. But if you want to add an additional separate air assist pump, you can plumb it right into the top of the laser right here. You don't even have to bring it down and plumb it into the nozzle like on other laser designs. So absolutely genius feature. I really hope that all the other CNC laser manufacturers take a note from the Orchard book and start adding that feature onto their lasers because it is just so convenient and so helpful. Well, it's definitely pretty awesome that this laser is capable of making custom inlaid pre-slotted fretboards, right? And it's actually really cool that a standard guitar scale fretboard can fit diagonally inside the cutting area of this machine. Now, 
Unfortunately, I build way more basses than I build guitars, and a bass fretboard is not gonna fit in this cutting area, which is why I really need the extension kit for this thing. Now, they announced the extension kit for this a couple of months ago, and I've been waiting for forever to get my hands on one, and I just got tired of waiting. I need to get this video done. But when that extension comes, I'm definitely gonna be making a lot of bass fretboards with this thing. Now, this guitar pedal enclosure is kind of ugly, but I just love it. It looks like a World War I era ammo crate or something. But my real motivation for making this pedal enclosure wasn't necessarily that I wanted to make a pedal enclosure, but it was kind of a test to see how sturdy it would be. And it is, man, it is very sturdy like very strong, like I could probably stand on this, no problem. And so what I really want to do, I told you guys earlier that I am waiting on my extension kit to come, but when my extension kit comes, I want to use a similar design to make a pedal board on this laser. I think that would be absolutely sick. Making it out of five mil Luon, it'd be nice and lightweight. I'd be able to stain it a cool color. It'd be plenty sturdy. And I can't wait to try that. Again, I wanna thank madethebest.com for sponsoring this video. I've got links to madethebest.com where you can buy this laser as well as on Amazon as well if you'd prefer to spend a little bit more money and buy it there. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.